Uh, my name is Michael. Uh, my talk is about running and distributing FreeBSD containers. And more importantly, uh, what can we do to, uh, I claim we make it even better than Docker containers on Linux. Um, I was here in EuroBSDCon last year talking about how I, how I have an open source version of the things I'm working on. Uh, after that, I take a couple month of, uh, months of break and actually implement it out, and this is the result I'm presenting. So uh, the overall of the talk, I will try to have a quick introduction to containers and OCI, and why does it matter when we already have gels and so many kinds of uh, gel manager. And I will talk about when implementing a container system for FreeBSD, what kind of issue we run into, or special consideration, and more importantly, the special features that FreeBSD give us. Uh, then I will do some demo, actually we'll do some demo throughout the talk. And lastly, I will talk about some future work and maybe something deeper in the architecture uh, related things. So um, let's start with uh, OCI. So if you uh, not familiar with OCI, it's basically a um, project from Linux Foundation. Uh, after Docker and all that, people realized they want to have a more standardized um, specification to define what is, well, not really what is a container, but how to distribute some um, bobs and then how to uh, run them, basically like uh, the environment variables, uh, different kinds of specification. and. It kind of can break into three uh, really important specification. The first one is a runtime specification. Kind of irrelevant in this case, but uh, basically it's like telling the actual runtime to say like um, what to run and then what is the required um, condition. The last two is more interesting, uh, which is the image speci uh, specification. Basically telling, it's a manifest to say like um, what to run. And uh, I think most important is the distribution specification, which is like when we have a container, how do we distribute it? That means like uh, how vendors build facility uh, to support um, people to push their container. Uh, that kind of translate to if we are able to adopt a distribution specification, we can just uh, utilize the existing infrastructure, for example, Docker Hub, or R3 uh, CL to distribute a FreeBSD container, which is the prime goal uh, of this project. And um, first, like uh, I'm implementing new things, right? So let's talk about what we have already and why I need to implement something. Uh, we already have a lot of things to uh, deal with gels, uh, app gels, bus gel, IOK, you name it. And we even have Portman now, which is fully OCI uh, compatible. Uh, but except for Portman and Port, mostly are uh, about creating stable gels. So you build something and the gel contains states and you manage it almost like you're having a virtual host. But in reality, in DevOps or in like uh, backend focus applications, those are just changed a lot. And if you attend Dave talk earlier, he, talk had, uh, he talked about uh, why immutable is kind of important when we're trying to uh, distribute a software solution. Uh, port was great. Uh, the only issue with port is that it's not OCI compatible, so I can't really use it work. It also uh, require uh, its own uh, image registry, so it's not really, uh, you can't really use Docker support for it, like to put it a simple way. Um, portman uh, basically is the Linux portman, so you, whatever you can do with uh, uh, Portman on Linux, you can do it on FreeBSD. He also uses ZFS as a backend, but uh, in this talk, I'm going to focus on XC, which is the tool I built, because I really can't think of a better name, uh, because naming is really hard. Um, first of all, when I uh, work on XC, there is some reason why I don't want to just port uh, Portman or Docker over. Most specifically is that um, I, I wasn't realizing someone was porting Portman over, so I didn't wait for it. Um, and also, I really want something that plays well with FreeBSD that's FreeBSD native, uh, both in terms of like uh, value and both in terms of like user experience. And I think there are uh, some uh, really important shortcoming in OCI image uh, specifications, which we'll get into the XC features. Uh, and again, I want something more FreeBSD container. That means I want to utilize all the features I have with FreeBSD when I build a container. Otherwise, 
why do I use FreeBSD, right? Because I want to run features that only exist in FreeBSD. Uh, we kind of talk about this. Uh, most importantly, again, it's distribution because when you figure out the distribution, then you have an uh, ecosystem that people can utilize it. It's not expensive to run. You don't have to spin up your own image registry uh, with things like that. But before we jump into uh, XC, uh, let's talk about uh, when implementing a FreeBSD container, what kind of issue we run into. Uh, first of all, on FreeBSD, if you use Beehive, uh, HuntTab, NNDM, uh, they all require you to have access to some kind of device nodes. And on FreeBSD, the way you manage device node is that uh, you manage via DevFS. So you need to, you really need something to uh, dynamically gener generate a DevFS rule set. Otherwise, uh, you, you technically can just like create a custom rule set every single time. You need to run application involves, uh, for example, Beehive, but it's not really practical. So we need something that we're able to automate it. But in the same time, you don't want um, image to say, I want to expose all the NVMe device to a container. So you kind of want to have something to guard uh, against it. Uh, some other special considerations are really um, FreeBSD features. For example, on FreeBSD, we can have a VNet gel and non-VNet gel. And like the talk I mentioned earlier, um, there are some really nice security features of non-VNet gel. Uh, for example, you cannot change the network stack. Uh, we can also run some sort of Linux gel. Uh, those, to me, is a very important feature. Uh, we can also do some things like gel set of S, right? And that is uh, something quite important because that means you kind of can dedicate a uh, data set to a container that implements certain solution or you want to run Foodery uh, in a gel. Lastly is DTrace. Uh, FreeBSD on DTrace is um, really quite nice in terms of like uh, doing something related to container uh, versus EP, uh, eBPF on Linux because on Linux, a container is really a number of uh, C groups and namespace. There's no way you use eBPF. You can say, I want to trace exactly this container because that doesn't really make sense. You can kind of trace a specific process, but nothing as like a whole um, container, like everything kind of running together. So uh, the last two issues kind of already fixed it. Uh, uh, there are changes committed that you can use ifconfig-j and root-j to just like change the routing table and configure network interface without having the binary in the jail. And also uh, as part of like porting portman, uh, the gentleman also implement like a now mount on file so we can actually uh, use now fs to mount files to file which is really nice okay come back to xc uh, it is a container runtime for freebsd uh, it actually uses its own image format it does not use an uh, oci one although you can understand it uh, it can utilize uh, oci distribution uh, specification to uh, upload and pull images that means uh, you can just upload to Docker Hub. You can upload to uh, Asuri. You basically can utilize uh, all the infrastructures vendors are already providing for containers. Um, the container images, I think, is improved. It's kind of more self-documenting. Uh, if you think about Linux container, you can think about those are like containers quite literally without a label. So there are just things inside, and you know it's some kind of liquid, but you don't. There's no really things like um, how to drink it or how much you should drink it, things like that. Uh, what I mean by self-documenting uh, container images, uh, as you see later, there's a lot of like uh, guarding against user from even uh, using it wrong with it. And these are also uh, a number of features that are available XC that couldn't be available on uh, Docker or Portman. For example, the network uh, King is a bit interesting in terms of setup. There's no such idea to say the container or like the container engine take over a network and um, have some really constraint to it. It's more like um, just let me know which interface should I create an address on or let me know which interface I need to bridge on and optionally uh, take care of like uh, some address allocation because you probably don't want to come up with an IP address every single time uh, when you want to create a new container like a bar cell. Um, we support both VNet and non-VNet containers because I think it's a really good security feature. Um, we'll get into the sanity checks later. Those are pretty cool in my opinion. 
volume hints as well. Those are really great uh, features that um, we can add to containers. Uh, most importantly, it handles a generation of a DevFS rule set. So if a container does require access to some kind of uh, device nodes to function, it kind of just takes care of that and then it do it in a quite a secure way. Uh, it also supports gelling and gelling uh, set of data sets. So the easiest way to say is that you can run Prudery, uh, you can distribute Prudery as a container. So you, don't you, don't, you really don't have to like set it up. Um, because it also understand OCI image format in general, that means uh, many Linux containers available right now can just run uh, a modified. Uh, lastly, how can we forget about DChase? Um, there's a lot of effort also put into making the DChase integration with FreeBSD and containers in general more seamless. And I think it would be a great addition if you uh, try to use in production or um, just doing some DevOps. Stuff. The architecture of XDs kind of look like this. First of all, let me take this with me. First of all, you have client, which is like the front end XD command. It basically sends commands to a daemon. And this daemon, when, we uh, when needed, for example, uh, when you say create a new container, it will fork itself uh, to other process that do the container run loop. And in between them, they're still con uh, communicating via the Unix socket. And when you need to create a new process, it would just like spin up a uh, gel the process. Um, the reason why to use Unix socket is not just because it's native-ish. For example, when Docker use Unix socket, it's really just running uh, HTTP over. But when HC run it, it's actually um, sending JSON files back and forth, but also uh, sending file descriptors, which later, if we have enough time, we we'll talk about it, which is uh, also a really cool feature. Uh, when we're able to use some OS uh, primitives. So um, let's talk about using HC. Well, first of all, you cannot run the container when you don't have the image, right? If, I, if you just have a thing, but if you're just a disk, but you don't have food, there's nothing for you to eat. Uh, there's a few ways you can uh, create these container images. First, uh, like I said before, you can just pull them from image registry. Uh, for example, Docker Hub, which we will demonstrate later. Or you can convert the gel to a container image. There's a script that hasn't uploaded yet, but basically not just like a not any gel, but you can also take a tarball and just convert it into a container image that is ready to distribute uh, to say Docker Hub or Artery. Lastly, uh, that is before I realized there's a Portman port, I also make a gel file thing. So it kind of has the uh, Docker file syntax that you can build your images in that way. Uh, in terms of networking, uh, it's kind of optional. For example, you don't have to say you must attach to XC network. You can just pass an existing interface. It will just work. But network is kind of nice uh, because it's kind of group the parameter in a single place. And it also do a few things like it will create PF tables uh, dynamically. It also allows the container to uh, belong to multiple uh, networks. And the address allocated in that network would just like fill into this um, PF tables or PF tables. Um, it basically breaks all the networking down to two questions, which is like, I don't care what you do with networking, but if you're running a VNet gel, just tell me which network interface I should put the address to. And if you're running a VNet gel, you just tell them, uh, you just tell the runtime uh, which interface should add as like the uh, bridge interface. So you just add a new repair there yet. Um, it doesn't have support to a net graph yet, but uh, that's future work. Uh, optionally also handles, again, uh, address allocation. So you give it a subnet, it will generate a new IP address that's not used in that subnet. So you don't have to kind of do the mental gymnastics to come up with a new IP address every single time. So let's do a demo uh, with Docker Hub and Linux containers because that's probably fun. And we can kind of see some shortcoming of existing um, Docker containers as well at the same time. Uh, first, let me figure out how to exit this. All right. So what I'm doing right now in this demo is that I'm going to pull uh, MariaDB from Docker Hub. So the uh, Docker Hub MariaDB is really um, a Linux uh, container. It's designed for Linux. But I'm going to show that we can just run it. And if demo got like me enough, nothing should go wrong. 
as you can see, it's downloading all the layers and then it's extracting them and then creating a set of data set and all that. Uh, in the same time, also we need to register the diff ID, but that's, that's in the technical implementation. We don't really have to care about that. So when I try to run it, I basically just say XC run, if I can type. Uh, I cannot type. <laughs> uh -huh. And then I haven't load KMOD yet. As you can see, actually tell me about it. It doesn't just try to run it. Uh, there's an also other uh, uh, ELF fallback friend settings, turn dot L64 dot fallback friend equals to three. Basically that means if they cannot identify um, for ABI for the binary, uh, it fall back to a Linux binary because that's what happens sometimes with Go containers. Okay, now we can actually run it. Now, as you can see, we're already uh, running a Linux MariaDB container uh, without any modification, except here's the thing. This happens to all the Linux containers, well, containers in general. It really depends on the script and how well the script is written for them to tell you what's wrong or what kind of variables are required. So we'll come back to this feature later, but let's put a MariaDB password so we can continue our demo. Right, so I'm going to run it. This time I use uh, the argument to set a Maria DB root password. I'm going to use a resecure password, which is password. And I run it. Now, as you can see, uh, the database is running right now, which is kind of cool, but uh, let's try to see if we can actually connect to it. Uh, first of all, I need SSH to my uh, Excuse me? Well, because I didn't alloc I didn't put it to any networks because this time we don't really have to use a network. But uh, because I'm now seeing Tmas in Tmas, so that's kind of annoying. But it reminds me to show one features, which is just like in Docker containers and all that, you can actually detach from the session and we attach it again. So I would just uh, use Control P Q. I'm detached. Nothing is here. But if I oh I didn't put different names to the container. But if I say XCPS, I can see the container is running, and I can refer to it using the ID or gel ID. Uh, I will use the gel ID because it's easier to type. So I can attach it back. So here we go. Go back here. In fact, you can have multiple. Uh, you can have multiple session at, uh, user attached to the same session, so it's kind of like a pool man's team us in that way as well. Uh, other way, really uh, good about it. But back to the demo, uh, we try to run a client inside the same container with uh, over Unix bucket to connect to this database. Uh, so again, I will use XC. This time, we use exec. I will allocate new terminal, and then I will say uh, this time I will use the container ID instead actually. And then I will say MariaDB, and then say uh, BC deny because I need to, I cannot type because I need a password. And now we're connected to the same MariaDB. So this is running a Linux container without any modification. All right, back to the slides. Well, that's great for deny. Thank you. <laughs> but that's the, unfortunately, that's probably the least impressive part of the demo. So um, before we talk about the more advanced features, let's talk, uh, step back a little bit and talk about FFS rule set management because uh, I hope I've demonstrated how important the whole thing is. And one class of application that I forgot to mention is that when, let's say you have a jail, what it does, well, container, what it does is running Flask on the disk, then you obviously need to find a way to pass the uh, device to the jail. And th in this case, you really need a DFS rule set management. Um, so I think I have a cool demo to, sh and also D-Trace for that matter. So I have a cool demo to show. Actually, I think I messed up with my slides order. Uh, but anyway, we'll just show the Erlang demo anyway. Uh, now, because um, the D-Trace doesn't really run much better in um, x86, so I'm just going to use a server at home. 
to do it. And um, XC as a runtime itself actually also register. Um, yeah, we'll go back to the slides later, but we'll do a demo here anyway. Uh, it actually registered D trace USDT, so we can actually trace exactly what is going on inside the container runtime. So for example, it's creating gel, it will show up um, and all that. You can also, um, you can also uh, optionally fence mark for uh, letting me know the potential security uh, issue, but you can optionally uh, expose the USDT capability to the gel as well. So if you try to run something like Erlang in the gel, you can actually uh, detrace the USDT probes outside the gel as well. So uh, I will run it, but this time I will, uh, I don't think I can learn an image, but instead I will run the stock FreeBSD image and install Erlang inside. Uh, I will run uh, this detrace probe first just to show that uh, the runtime is doing something. So we say, uh, okay, we back to our So when the gel is created, it should print us something. It should print the, uh, the name of the gel and the gel ID. Alright. Let's run it. Okay, so as we create a container, as you can see, D-Trace takes it up, and then now it says, hey, uh, gel has been created. So if you need to build some kind of special tools to say uh, gather some kind of data and show on Grafana, this is one way to do it. You won't have to patch it for it to work. <coughs> but please give me a suggestion on where to put more USDT probes if that something uh, can help you. So we're going to install Erlang. And by the way, as you can see, this time I attach a network there. Because I need So I'm going to run DLL, which is the Erlang uh, virtual machine, well, the Erlang shell inside. And now I'm going to um, trace the D-trace probe. As you can see, it already matched uh, the Erlang probes. So let's try something useful in Erlang, for example, printing Hello World. When I run the Hello World, uh, D-Trace is able to pick up uh, the USDT happening in the Erlang shell and then just uh, print things out. So if your kind of workload, um, I don't know, maybe you are pre-Facebook, um, WhatsApp, or let's say you depend on MQTT a lot, so you're probably using Erlang. That means when you're running a container on FreeBSD, you automatically get the feature, say, uh, you can trace the container that way. So this is, um, in my opinion, a really good way uh, to show the string for FreeBSD and uh, D-Trace. But uh, the cool thing does not stop here because um, we have our own D-Trace invention called D-Watch, which basically are scripts uh, built around D-Trace. And I built a shorthand for it. First of all, I need to know the container name for it or ID. This is five, so I can say XC trace uh, five. Uh, you can also use different DWatch profile, but by default, you just show the system call. Now, if I try to do things inside the container, if I can, oh, it's doing thing already. Great. Uh, we already see like uh, the system. Yeah. Anyway, we already see like um, DWatch is doing its thing, and then show all the system call things happening in the container. And by the way, um, because again, FreeBSD uh, container and gel are one-to-one, -one, that means you can literally just say, I really want to trace things happening in the container. And you can see all the process and how the interactions is happening in between, which is really hard to do on Linux, if not impossible. Um, so this shows up the D-Trace feature and back to our unordered slides. Uh, let me skip this part so I can talk about, yeah, I, I prepared a slide for D-Trace, uh, I just messed it up. Um, but it kind of caught me off, uh, off guard a little bit. So I guess I have to do the DevFS demo as well. Uh, the DevFS demo I have picked is a Beehive. Um, in fact, it's 
it's just a really simple beehive. Um, let me show you the gel file for this uh, beehive image. So it just installed beehive frameworks. Um, forget about this part first, we'll talk about these features later, which are super, super cool, important features. Uh, note, note these directives here, these are actually um, DevFS syntax. So uh, what here means is basically that this container requires access to some device path. Uh, I need to unhide VMM and VMM slash the name of the beehive a virtual machine, as well as like the VMM IO. And entry point, instead of using a script, I just use something really simple. I will run beehive, and these are the commands, uh, variables to run beehive. So there's no disk here, there's no network here, just a really simple uh, example of beehive running a UEMI, uh, UEFI uh, shell. And I already built it called, um, what do I call it? I kind of forgot. Uh, give me one second, I need to check my note. Okay, here we go. So I run it. Um, yep, if I run it right now, uh, uh, give me one second, I might forgot to run the daemon. Ah, I know why. Let me give it a different name because there's an other beehive already running uh, with this name. So I will call it Euro uh, BSDCon and it also doesn't work, why? Uh, yeah, demo god really hates me, turns out. You, you have been taunting the demo god. You have I know, right? Two I or three spectacularly successful demos. You're yeah, <laughs> I really shouldn't troll demo god. Is it gonna work? Uh, it's still, in, I'm restarting the Dietrich daemon. Uh, sorry, I mean the XC daemon. Uh, Q or XC. There's probably something. Just give me one second. Okay, it's running now. What? Okay, anyway. Uh, <laughs> yes, what it's supposed to show is that it will show um, a palm to say, do you really want to add this uh, DevFS rules to um, the DevFS? So you can kind of review the resultant um, DevFS rules before it actually starts the container. So that way, you still have the image able to specify what kind of things in it, but in the same time, uh, you, don't, you don't lose control of what kind of device you're exposing. Yep, Mark. Uh, oh, that's just a tag. So it's like the image name and the tag. I probably messed up the tag somewhere, uh, yeah, as well. That's probably why it's not running. But um, five minutes ago, it's running fine. It's it's not a gel ID. Uh, it's it's kind of like the MariaDB 10.9 thing. Yeah. Go ahead. How do we fix the DevFS root test number? Uh, it kind of gives it a range for it to generate. So for example, in my current configuration, if I can show you. Uh, it starts from 1,000. Uh, and by default, I think I level it like a couple hundred. So it's not trying to exhaust the uh, DevFS ID. Yep. And what are the advantages of using a DFS root test instead of just applying the rules to the main point? Uh, you start with the BIO root test and allow whatever you want after the method? It is actually doing that, but it has a default rules uh, up front and then put the other rules. Uh, and other reason that you have to kind of generate it is because uh, depends on the workflow you want to run, you can't really predict what kind of device you really need to expose. You can actually, uh, I have experimenting adding a guard statement at the end of the DevFS rule set as well. So that means like definitely do not expose this device nodes. But if I add that, yeah, because let's say you really have a container that run fast on one of the disks. You know, those edge cases. Uh, we'll come back to it when, when we have time later. Uh, I hate demo god. So, um, what all the things I told you to ignore is called it's a feature in XC called environment variable uh, guarding. So essentially, what it is is that um, in traditional uh, container, you only provide default value and default value to the um, environment variable you have to run. So if you um, think back the um, 
MariaDB example, the script has to say, well, when the script is running, that means you have to create a container already, and it has to run, and then it depends on the script to tell you you're missing an environment variable. And then the container gets destroyed, uh, resources got wasted, right? The idea is, um, here we go. We embed the specification for the required environment variables in the image format. This is the reason why we need to have a different image format than the OCI one, but the benefit uh, it provides is just huge. Uh, and not just that, um, if the required environment variable is required at all, well, that's kind of silly, but also a good description. So for example, you try to run a container that's missing some variable, instead of the script telling you what is missing and go to GitHub and try to find a solution, you as a developer can provide a description of what what is the missing environment variables and what is it for. So you don't have to go back to GitHub or external documentation. And this is all inspired by syscontrol-d, which is part, I think, about FreeBSD culture, uh, about documentation. Um, if you try to, do I have an example to try that? You know what, I, th I think we'll show it later. Uh, later we have an example showing running Prudery in a jail. Uh, so I will show that later. And this, yeah, damn it, demo god. And these are about D-Trace. And let's talk about ZFS, also a really important feature. So if you're using FreeBSD, you're probably using ZFS. And what's the point of running container if you can't take some kind of advantage uh, from ZFS, right? So the first one is kind of easier to understand. It's called volume hints. So basically, uh, this is again why the reason why we cannot, I cannot really reuse the OCI form, uh, image format despite I want to. Um, it basically um, allows the developer to specify a bunch of things called volume hints. Essentially, what they are are hints about the ZFS properties law or like the uh, most recommended defaults, you can think it that way. So for example, you're shipping a, a Postgres uh, container, you might have volumes about what's the most optimized um, properties for a set of S data set. So you can specify all that here. Um, the mount point thing is like standard thing, basically just say where to mount it, and if it's required, things like that. Um, the idea is that now you're not just shipping a water bottle, you're also shipping a label to say don't eat more than two dose a day or something like that. And when you try to create a volume for that purpose, all this default automatically applies. So it guarantees you to get the most optimal settings. Of course, you can always uh, override it later, but that's the point. Another thing is uh, it kind of runtime also manage a gel uh, set of S. So um, normally when you do set of S gel, a data set and a gel, uh, it will work. But when you try to gel it, the same data set to another gel, you just detach from the previous gel and move to the second gel. So it kind of like, it can cause some serious error, but the runtime will keep track of, uh, in this case, runtime will keep track of the gel set of S allocation. So if the uh, set of S is already mounted in one gel, it will prevent it from uh, detaching and mounting the other gel. And I want to show the example of um, Poodery uh, which is kind of like multiple things is going on together. Um, first of all, it needs a set of S to work. Uh, it also kind of uh, showcase of NAS the gel and also the um, environment variable things. looks like this. Uh, again, we install Prudery, Gate, and uh, Nginx because I also, also want to show a uh, case the port redirection. Uh, we need to create a directory there because Prudery complain you don't have a disk file directory. Uh, we add an environment that is like called set of data set. Basically, say a set of data set for Prudery. Now, this container, because I want to show how things work inside of gel, I'm not going to use an entry script. But as you can imagine, when you know 
the um, value of the setter data set assigned to you, you can write some script to patch the Poodery configuration file so it would just work. And it also allows tons of attributes like unique nullfs, setfs, all that. Uh, copy the engine x config over. And now here's uh, the thing we talked about. We assign a new volume to say, I make a new volume that um, the hint is setfs compression is off and a times off because they are stored in these files. So they're already compressed. There's no point to have setfs to try to compress it again. And I was, uh, have already built it, but I can build it again. Um, XC build, we require network to run this build, and I called it um, Prudery Euro. As you can see, it's uh, running um, the commands in the builder. That says, I think the recommend way to do this kind of thing is try to use Builder and Portman to build it because their caching system is much better. Uh, the moment I uh, know the policies are kind of abandoned to uh, implement the caching layer because uh, that's too much work on my side. Okay, and you, you can see here you, uh, it's not actually stuck. What is happening here is that it's running set of div and try to create a new layer um, for the container. And now we are done. And I already forgot what kind of, uh, what name I put it. Uh, okay, it's put it Euro. So we'll try to run it. Uh, and before that, I will try to create um, that data, uh, set of data set for main Poodoo stuff. Uh, gel is on. Uh, C root Poodoo. Uh, no, it's set of S, I'm sorry. Uh, yep, here we go. And then um, let's try to also create a volume for the these files. Just copy a previous command, and that is euro. And um, I give you a name called hello world standard. Now, if I set up as um, get all, you know what? Maybe not get all, maybe get compression. And you can see it's uh, compression is set to off and locally set to off. So this way you can distribute uh, even the set of S settings. And now we want to actually run the thing. Uh, this is the right one, but I don't want to uh, use the right one. I use, want to use the wrong one to showcase um, uh, something. So instead of that, uh, dash Z basically means pass the set of S data set to the jail, but let's remove that. It would be really funny if that it does not work. Okay, as you can see, because we have not, we don't have a value bound to set up a data set, it would just refuse to run. And all these are done without the cost of even creating a container because all of these can uh, done pre-instantiation. Uh, and also tell you what is missing and why is it missing, right? It's like, I need a set up a data set for Poodoo. Okay, fine, I will do that. Okay, that's funny, I cannot find the command. I will just remove the this file thing because I think it's making it hard to see. I will use another port for it. And it's not Poodoo 2 it's Poodoo Euro. Okay, I'm in already. So the container is, is that quick, it's there. Uh, because I don't have a script here. I Oh, uh, let's show the environment variable first. but I'm going to do it by hand. Uh, uh, oh, that's really funny. Uh, all right, and then I need to copy my gigantic uh, command. Basically, I try to create um, gel here. Build. Did I do full pop redirection? Uh, I don't care. Maybe I. And here, uh, I'm opening my Chrome on the other screen. Point to port 80, 80. Uh, 
which does uh yeah anyway it's probably a bad demo uh <laughs> because it takes so long five minutes and regular hmm but but uh because it takes so long i can detach it again like docker we can detach it right so uh, and then we can also demonstrate uh, pushing uh, an image. Uh, all right, so to push an image, let's say I want to push it to um, Euro, Euro demo. Uh, I cannot type. So um, XC test 51, just like uh, R3, the container which here I have with R3. So as you can see, it's uh, trying to upload thing. Uh, the funny thing is that you can actually interrupt it any time because it's actually controlled by a daemon. It's not actually running a program. Uh, that also means you can have multiple users try to connect to the same daemon and try to pull image. If they're holding the same layer, there's no, that's not going to be very conditional because it's all managed by a daemon. And therefore, I can uh, seems to be canceling any time. But if I attach it back, you can see the same thing is actually still running. Uh, this kind of both a bug and features that kind of means I also need to implement a cancel command, which may not, um, yeah, just more commands need to be implemented. But it turns out both these two demos taking some time, but it's okay, we can cancel, uh, not cancel it, but detach it first. And then we attach to the other one, uh -huh. 28, is it still, yeah, it's still calling. Yeah, probably a really bad idea, isn't it? Yep. Uh, you basically use the exif to build, the, for example, in this case, that's a gel file, and you use it to build it. Um, and then after you build it, just copy the thing, thing just like engines. Oh, of course, engines as well. I forgot to uh, run engines inside this gel. Uh, I can exact, uh, allocate a terminal, bean shell. Uh, I cannot type really. Okay, uh, maybe service nginx start one start. Sorry about that. Okay. And then uh, a zero a zero. Yeah, I probably figure out the PF thing later. Probably my Mac just restart, so I don't have the PF rule on my Mac. Uh, but anyway, um, you can use dash p like the port forwarding rule just like you use do with Docker. In fact, it support the whole feature. With more, you can even uh, specify multiple interface uh, for it to do the redirection and you can run. Am I in a jail outside? Uh, I'm in a jail. Um, you can say XC LDL show rules, I believe. Oh yeah, I didn't have, oh, I didn't do the redirection. That's why it doesn't work. But anyhow, um, let's go back and check if it's finished. Uh, oh. It's done already. Uh, yeah, as you know, Kuduri build con uh, packages in jail. So this just kind of show like, if you want to do a NASA jail thing, it also works. Uh, I think I'm two minutes left. Yep, so uh, any questions? I don't think I have time to do, got talk about this. Uh, most of it is that they kind of limit, oh, first is D-Trace, you can't really trade a container as a container, especially there's multiple process inside. Uh, the second limitation is really not limit uh, Linux lim limitation, but like all kinds of specification thing, like early checking, they are just not defining OCI spec. So technically, is it possible for them to implement that? Yes, but now they don't have it, so they don't have it. Uh, it depends on how well support by FreeBSD is the Linux translation uh, layer. For example, if you, want, if you try to run some system D stuff or if, if it requires some system call that FreeBSD has not implemented for Linux, then obviously it won't run. But if you just have like um, something Linux-ish, it could probably run. I think I try next, uh, next cloud and that worked, but I haven't used like many features in the X cloud to really verify it works 100% right. Uh, I don't think that is possible because Linux uh, does not understand the FreeBSD APIs and system calls for that. Yep. Yep. Uh, how do you think the 
you about like versions? Like what version would you say you're at right now? And do you have a sense of like when you would feel like this was ready for production? Yeah, the question is about the progress and version. I think it's more pre-alpha. There's still a lot of things for me to clean up. Uh, I mean, the print message is really just Rust print app, right? <laughs> so also a lot of like uh, user experience things. Uh, I do suffer from second system syndromes, uh, but I try to push it out a set. Um, maybe if there are many people to help, maybe a couple months, maybe if there's not many people to help, maybe so longer. You're open to people. Yeah, it's, it's on GitHub, so. Okay. Yep. Any other question? Yep. Can you give Uh, yes, yes. Uh, the question is like, can you run like multiple container and have them to interact with each other that way? Uh, it's yes, because um, they really just like talk to each, each other over the network. Um, but unlike the Docker container, um, by default, XC does not come with a DNS server. You can override DNS, but all that. But um, there's a feature in XC you have to manually use it that uh, basically say you put a couple holes in the same um, host group and each container can belong to multiple host group and when you commit it it will write the ip address i mean you put the name to ip address mapping and write to the host file of each a uh not really socket they, they're over kind of network uh i think not but you can always mount it yep that is uh, i haven't experienced uh, experiment that yet, but maybe. Yeah, but that's also other uh, future work thing I want to do, um, which is about having kind of breaking the wall to have one container tell somehow magically tell the um, runtime say I need to connect to other container kind of things like that. So uh, one thing interesting about XC, if we go back to the XC architecture. Um, so this is actually not, it's like um, unit socket, but there's some abstraction built on top of it called channel. So the daemon actually can create multiple channels. That means multiple unit socket listening. And my goal actually is try to make it also multi-user friendly. So each channel you can attach some kind of ACL thing going inside. So uh, you can kind of expose part of the features to some channel. It's actually important because uh, that's how if we need to support uh, NAS the XC, because you can't uh, change the FFS rules inside a jail. So uh, they have to have some way to talk to the uh, prison zero to uh, deal with the, uh, the FFS things. Yep. Maybe we'll go if you show the GitHub repository. Oh, right, 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 right. of course. Uh, otherwise, we are closing the session. Uh, let's talk. So uh, thank you very much. Well, thank you.